And as far as the pawn industry is going, um, and the retail's not, not there at the moment. They're uh, actually taking in more than they're selling. The world was definitely not expecting this, but it looks like the end of Pawn Stars is here, everyone. Today, we're gonna to be looking at the events that led to the Pawn Stars throwing in the towel and discontinuing the show. Also, comment the end below, and we'll give a lucky winner a shout out in our next video. Number 10, the lawsuits. So many lawsuits. If you don't think you'll run over a few speed bumps on your way to the top, you're sadly mistaken. Since their debut on the History Channel, the gold and silver pawn shop has been the subject for more than a dozen lawsuits from customers and employees. One of the shop's more well-known cases comes from David Walters, a man who sued Pawn Stars for melting down his gold coin collection valued at 50000 back in 2014. His niece had allegedly stole the collection, receiving a mere 12000 from the pawn shop. And unfortunately for the Walters, the Nevada court system was in favor for the Pawn Stars. In 2012, our four celebrities and their pawn shop also came under fire by their former manager slash agent, Wayne Jeffries, following an alleged breach of contract. Another suit occurred in 2012 as well, when the Vietnam veteran was roughly taken out of the shop by security. The man, Daniel Callahan, sought 20,000 for his injuries. However, anything about the case has been kept under the wraps. In an interview with Fox, all Harrison had to say about the lawsuits was, the more money you make, the more times people sue you. People are always going to eventually go to sue you for something. Well, that's all it is. A line to get in a pawn <laughs> Number 9. The show interferes with the shop. When a show gains momentum and is shot out of a certain real-world location, tourists are bound to show up and check it out. For several years, this has been the sad truth for Gold and Silver Pond, attracting roughly 5,000 visitors to the shop each day. According to the store manager, Travis Benton, about 1 in 100 visitors are actually genuine customers, hindering the business. Because of this, pawns, trade-ins, and business deals are extraordinarily difficult to regularly conduct in the shop, making it more of a gift shop in a sense of tourists to buy memorabilia. It hasn't exactly forced the gold and silver guys to shut down their doors, but this new business model of theirs has certainly taken a toll on the shop's income. Not so much of their own, though. Oh, and good luck to ever seeing the actual Pawn Stars in the shop anymore, because... Hello. Hey, how's it going? Fine. I have an Ansel Adams print I'd like you to take a look at. Sure. From the Adams family? Not really. But... Number eight. They don't even work at the pawn shop. Because of their show on History Channel, the pawn stars are able to make a wealthy living through other means. So don't expect seeing them in the shop unless they're quote unquote working. And they still pop in once in a while, but it's only when it's time to film the show, which isn't done often as you'd think. They schedule the customers to see you on TV, and they know exactly what they're bringing ahead of time. To film the show, they also have to temporarily close the shop, which is also your best chance at meeting the crew. Chumley, whose real name is Austin Russell, is free on bail. He's facing felony drug and weapons charges after police searched his home last week. Number seven, Chum Lee's legal issues. On the show, Chum Lee is quite the character, having somewhat become the shop's punching bag for laughs. In general, he seems like a softie. However, he recently came into trouble in 2016 when his home was raided by the Las Vegas police in relations to a sexual assault case. What came out of the raid were some narcotics, Xanax, methamphetamine, and marijuana, as well as an unlicensed firearm. Chum Lee's experience at the Gold and Silver Pawn Shop must have come in handy though. When all but one charge was dropped in the case, he avoided jail time, but subsequently participated in several counseling sessions while under probation. There was also the alleged assault case, also in 2016, following a brawl on Hollywood Boulevard. Typically, mistakes such as these will follow someone around for a while, and it's definitely reshaped the way some viewers look at Chum Lee and his association with the Pawn Stars. Number six, Corey's Troubles. For someone who owns a bar, Corey sure can't control his alcohol. One incident occurred in 2012 when Big Haas was out in Big Bear Lake, California to celebrate a momentous occasion. Things got really loud really quick. However, and soon enough, Corey found himself in a drunk tank after resisting arrest and having a minor bar fight with a security guard. Then again, in August of 2014, it was lightly reported on that during a motorcycle ride out in Missouri, Big Haas got himself big hammered again, acting ridiculously drunk and obnoxious. According to a few witnesses and photos, the man was far past his drinking limit this time and just urinated all over a bar stool quite profoundly as well and while the event didn't get Haas kicked out the show it didn't get him kicked out of the bar after tossing a bar stool across the room at least he apologized afterwards right I think at auction you're looking at a significant value in excess of two hundred fifty thousand dollars number five they lack a sense of credibility remember the saying just because someone says something 
doesn't mean it's true. The Pawn Stars are no different. Despite the show being educational, they've not let go of the fact that there's still a reality TV show. With that in mind, Pawn Stars will only want to show off the most exciting and expensive pieces brought in, but they're not always honest about the items. The idea of bringing on experts came from a show like Pawn Stars that never got past its first season. The idea was to bring on numerous professionals to appraise items, and the highest valued appraisal would be the one on air, because of its shock value. There's no better feeling than seeing someone bring in an antique falsely advertised at $85,000. Eventually, however, most of the experts we see now are just hired by producers to give them reasonably high or low valuations. A man best known as the toy expert on Pawn Stars is facing a domestic violence charge following an incident outside a restaurant last month. Number four, the experts also have dark secrets. The Pawn Stars wouldn't be quite as complete without their set of experts we see coming every now and then, but there's still a lot we don't know about them, some of which ain't so great. Johnny Jimenez Jr. was a former toy expert on Pawn Stars until his arrest in late 2015, following a domestic abuse case with his girlfriend, whom he'd bring to the ground in a restaurant parking lot. John Reskinoff was an autograph authenticator on the show, whom in a 2011 episode falsely identified Al Capone's signature for that of Al Rudy, who was actually a producer on The Godfather with Pacino. The owner of the screenplay, Diane, still managed to sell off the screenplay anyways for $12,000, blowing out Rick's offer for $500. Drew Max was another authenticator who purposely used his present on pawn stores to falsely identify sports memorabilia as real, reportedly costing sellers thousands. Lastly, and most recently, Steve Grad's expert skills were put into question in February of 2018, after incorrectly identifying numerous signatures at a convention, causing him to also be fired. To be honest, Pawn Stars should just stick away from autograph authenticators altogether. Number 3. The Pawn Plaza Flop With the series' fast rise in popularity, Rick noticed an opportunity to expand and benefit from the thousands of tourists who visit the store every single day. If you happen to have visited the pawn shop itself, you probably noticed the Pawn Plaza across the way, which houses several stores, dining, and shopping. Though, by August 2016, the smoke shop, pizza place, and donut shop all shut their doors. The location has failed miserably since, subsequently costing the Pawn Stars a cool penny. I have a book signed by Shoeless Joe Jackson. Number two, hold this L, Pawn Stars. Leaving aside the financial loss Harrison had taken on the Pawn Plaza, our pawn brokers have also taken quite a few losses on items as well. One of the shop's most popular losses comes from the time Rick Harrison purchased a quote unquote signed Shoeless Joe Jackson book for 13,000. Seriously, man? Go find yourself some new authenticators. There was also a time when Corey, Big Hoss Harrison, bought a fake Wheelie Maze jersey for 31,000, which was also wrongfully authenticated. Guy in a suit comes in the pawn shop, got a big set of diamond earrings. Then there was a time Rick recounted purchasing a pair of diamond earrings for $40,000. Too bad they were stolen and rightfully returned to the owner because now Rick was out of 40 grand. The hardest loss, however, comes from an auction in 2015 when Rick was selling off old memorabilia in the shop. He lost 100,000 that day. What do we got here? This is a Sony Walkman. Okay, that's a little antiquated. <laughs> Number one, there's a lack of interest from Rick. After doing the same thing over and over again, you're bound to get tired of it. I have probably the world's number one Pokemon collection inside this case. Little figures? Cards, and they're all Charizards. But when it's the star of the show who wants to leave, things really are never the same. Just look at The Office when Michael left, or that 70s show when Eric left. Anyways, originally Rick was hoping for one or two seasons on the History Channel, not 15. He's grown tired of working 12 hours a day, and in a 2015 interview with CBS News, he explained that the following 2017 year, he'd drastically be slowing down his involvement in the shop and the show. The show will still be around, Rick says, but the longevity of the show is questionable. And with that being said, that concludes why the Pawn Stars could be coming to an end. Feel free to comment what you guys thought about today's video and maybe leave a like if you enjoyed. Also, don't forget to subscribe and push that notification button to see more film-focused videos similar to this one in the near future. And have yourselves an excellent day.
Harrison himself was given the key to Lexington, North Carolina, a fitting tribute to the place that he grew up in. His family has given many statements on the passing, but this one from his son Rick seemed the most appropriate. He will be tremendously missed by our family, the team at Golden Silver Pond, and his many fans over the world. He was my hero, and I was fortunate to get a very cool old man as my dad, that I got to share him with so many others, and they got to see what a great family man he was. It's something I am grateful to have experienced with him. He lived a very full life, and through the history channel television show Pawn Stars touch the lives of people all over, teaching them the value of loving your family, hard work, and humor. We appreciate everyone's thoughts and prayers, and ask that we are provided some privacy at this time.